And welcome inside David Marine Corps Memorial Stadium here in Annapolis. Sunshine coming out after some morning clouds here in Annapolis. Pete Methurst, Joe Miller with you high atop Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Number 12, Penn State and the Navy Midshipmen here this afternoon. And Joe for the mids, the marquee says you've won 37 of 39 against Penn State, except a closer look inside the numbers is the last time you played was 2003. Penn State won a snoozer 5-4. As I broadcasted that game. However, today it might be 5-4 after one quarter between these two teams with the way they've played so far this year. Well, the mids are 30-0 and here at home against Penn State. Here you look at the Penn State starting lineup and Matt Trainer and TJ Malone, the two names that stick out on attack for this Penn State team alone, the Big Ten Player of the Year last year. Here's the Navy lineup with our line, Tolker and Haley. Uh, Jarris Swanson and Hewitt in the midfield, Bonnets, Marsh, Lacalzi, and Dan Daly, who you would think would be very busy in goal today, gets the start between the pipes. I Jack Frassi on for Penn State, second team All-American last season, starts in goal for Penn State. Joe, I would ask you this. Xavier Arline's got nine points, seven goals, two assists in the first three games. Does Navy need him to do even more, though, right now? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think... Look, games dictate sort of those individual uh, accolades. And, and and I don't think I as far as in what they've produced so far in offense, they need him to do anything more. I think it, it's really something that goes in a game-by-game -game basis when you talk about those kind of things. I mean, you look at today, we expect some goals to be scored today, but the mids, you know, have at least statistically the advantage on faceoff, we think. You know, maybe this game – changes the style a little bit. Maybe they don't go as much up-tempo. I doubt it, but we'll see how this one plays out. And we are underway here in Annapolis. Zach Hayashi has been fantastic for the mids all year in terms of face-offs. Gets the opening face-off with the ball down on the far side as he tried to underhand scoop it to the far side. And the mids going to end up giving away possession, or will they? Loose ball push on Jackson Peters. Yes, it will be. Penn State possession. Well, we see early on Penn State is, you know, in the games that they've played this season, you look at Navy, no team's going to pressure in the middle third of the field like Penn State, at least to this point that they've seen so far. And you get the face-off win, but the immediate double team and the turnover by the mids. And that's going to be a big part of this game, too, turnovers. I mean, you look at Penn State. It, they've turned it over 20 times a game. Now, that's a little bit of their style of play. Oh, beautiful pass across the crease. And the Nittany Lions on the board as Will Pedden puts it home. Terrific pass from Jake Morin. And Penn State leads it by a count of one nothing. just 46 seconds into the – or 44 seconds, rather, into the game. Well, Pedden getting the start, not Lehman on attack for Penn State. And this is just great work. I mean, what ball movement here. You win your individual matchup there – and you're able to set up the easy goal. Great sharing of the ball there and Petten getting the goal, but it was started by Morin's great movement off the wing. And I think that's the biggest thing you look at this Penn State team is their athletic ability on the attack, especially Malone and his speed and quickness. But that's where Navy has a chance to establish the momentum early, Joe, with that w opening faceoff and after turning it over, Penn State turns it into a goal, so you're already chasing the game here if you're Navy. The freshman Marsh, long pole, into the under the restraining line, loses it, ball free at the top of the box. Somehow Navy has it for the moment at least. Tolker double teamed while on the ground. He loses it. Ball still chopped that down there. Our line tries to pick it up for Navy, and it will be Penn State that comes away with the ground ball. Will Costin able to pull it in. Here come the Nittany Lions left to right. Well, again, it's going to be like that all day. It just the immediate double team. I mean, the first opening game of the season, Mount St. Mary's didn't double at all the entire game. And we probably see more double teams from Penn State here in the first two minutes of this contest than we saw all that game. I mean, they're going to harass you. They're going to try to get the ball loose. That's what they do. And we've seen it here twice already. It's high pressure. It's up tempo. And when they are clicking offensively, it's a lot of fun to watch. Got to be imagined for a lacrosse player. It's got to be fun to play. Here's another opportunity. Question mark move. Will Pedden from behind the goal. He puts it in down low past Dan Daly at 13.03. And the Nittany Lions lead 2-0. Well, they couldn't ask for a better start here for Penn State. They've caused a couple turnovers early on. And now it's Pedden turning the corner here 
on the feed from behind, and he just wins his individual matchup there. Defender gets tied up there a little bit behind the cage. And Petten turns the corner, and that's really a layup for him, his second goal of the season. Two shots, two goals. For third of the season, second yep. of today. With Mercer giving the assist on the play. Ayashi will win it again. You can hear Penn State's staff. They're trying to get inside the referee's head, as does every coach on faceoffs, claiming the guy moves early. I mean, we've over-legislated the faceoff now so much. There's a long pass, dangerous. Hewitt does able to get it. Brent McVicker was closing in for Penn State there, and the Mids will finally have a settled possession here on offense, but down 2 nothing. You can hear our crowd, Mike, taking you inside those conversations between the officials and the coaches down there. And it's worth it. I mean, you get the referee to look for it a little harder. Here's Swanson. He'll fire a 14-yard shot. High to low. Goes wide. Shot clock at 39 for the mids with 12.20 to go. First quarter, 2 nothing. Penn State. And one of the things Penn State's done really well this season is jump out of the gate. Our line turned the corner there, a save made. They've outscored their opponents 13-6 to six in the first quarter this season, and they've done it <coughs> again here today. Jarris from a tough angle. It goes over top. Kaylee backing it up for the mids. Mack with five goals so far in the first three games for Navy on 13 shots. He and Jarris exchange behind the cage, short stick matchup for Jarris. Swanson moves far side for Hewitt. Max angles in, had a stick hit, and that's gonna be Penn State ball. Good job, Penn State defensively. Joe, we talk about so much about the tempo that they play at. So far though, their defense been solid, riding game's been good. They lead two nothing with the ball now, just over three minutes gone by. Patient clear that time. Mids clobber the Penn State midfielder in the middle of the field there, King, after he released the ball. I think athletically, the Mids can match up with Penn State. I mean, I think that's the big question that you always have when you talk about a team of Penn State's quality coming in here. But they've been a little slow to it here early on, and maybe just the pace taking them a little bit by surprise here early on. We'll see how they deal with it as the game goes along. It'll be Malone here on the near side. Grad student out of Westchester. Across the box at 14 yards from 10. Angling in, and Dan Daly makes the save on the low shot. His first of the game. Bounces it to his right for Peters, who can't find it. Peters hits it up in the air, and Malone swoops in. Unsettled situation. Pedden in front of the goal. Catches, has his shot blocked by Daly, who's 10 yards outside the keys. He's out. Shot score. Unsettled goal, Penn State. And the Nittany Lions lead 3-0. Great job that time, right place, right time for Matt Trainer, who puts it home. Uh, it's just a terrible job by the mids. I mean, Daly's initial pass is just uh, not good. Um, and then Peters couldn't find it. And it just becomes a scramble here. And, you know, Penn State just fortunate as Daly had a second shot, but I think he takes a peek up there and sees Ethan Long there and probably takes his eye off the ball there, eventually finding its way to Matt Trainer, who scores his 12th of the season. But the mids uh, just doing the little things wrong right now. Attention is in the detail. They are aiding Penn State in getting off to another fast start. Nittany Lions lead 3 0 with 10 and a half to go first quarter. They win the face off here. First one that Penn State has won here in the game. So the mids have had chances to establish themselves, just have not played clean lacrosse here in the first five minutes. Yeah, just a bit, it's, everything's been a little bit too rushed for them right now. We talked about in the pregame, you know, getting over the Towson loss and trying to quickly move on past it, but being down here three goals early does not help things. Bonnet's playing Malone, top of the box here. Primetime matchup between those two. Brent Fleck, back to Malone. Snaps it cross box. Trainer. Fires the shot. Daly gets a piece of that. It either hit him or it hit, perhaps hit uh, 
Gallagher in front for Navy. Either way, the mids have the ball off to the right. Good job that time trying to use the screen of Gallagher in front of Daly by Penn State, but it doesn't get through, and here comes Navy with Bonnets. Got to get it over, and he doesn't. Trying to hit Aiden Hurdle in the middle of the field, but again, got to know where that clock is. It was at 62, and he hadn't even released the pass yet. Well, I think Navy a little slow getting the – they were trying to get the second midfield unit on there, and they had something early, but they were slow getting off or slow communicating into who was going to come on because – they worked that quickly. I think they could have got Flaherty here midfield and brought it over with ease. But, again, another mistake by the mids here early on. Carter King goes down. Good pressure that time by Norton for the mids. Ball's free. Navy to the corner. Great riding pressure. Ball fed backwards toward the goal. Daly's got it. Immediately under riding pressure from Carter King. Finally gets it away. Ian, Ian McGullum for the mids. Doing a good job to get away from a couple of Penn State riders in that situation. Yeah, technically, you, you hardly ever want to throw it back towards your own goal there, but it worked out that time for the mids. You can definitely see Penn State has certain pressure points where they want to attack and when they don't. Haley with a bad pass. Good catch. Tough angle shot. Tolker. Fratzion turns it away. Ball free. He's under riding pressure as he runs out to scoop the ground ball. Tolker riding him. Good athleticism from the Penn State keeper to throw it far side. Yeah. But Alex Ross is pass coming back to the other side. Intended for Scarfy. Goes out of bounds. Navy gets it back quickly on the restart. Our line looks behind him. The stick on the field. I believe it's broken down by the handle. Referee throws it off the field. Flaherty now for the mids. Hauser, bouncing shot. Frassion turns it away. Rebound picked up inside. Shot wide by Haley. And yeah. run out by Penn State. Yeah, great look. I thought the initial shot might have hit the post, but either way, the rebound comes out in front. That's a great look for Haley. I mean, you're not going to get a better look if you just put it wide. Joe C. Slack, Jason Parks, Dan Bennett, our officials here this afternoon for this matchup between the Big Ten and the Patriot League as Penn State leads Navy 3 nothing with 7-17 to go here in this first quarter. The good news on that possession, you got two great looks. Unfortunately, you couldn't score either of them. You had your second midfield unit on. Hauser's been so good on those set shots. And it's a, you got an elite keeper in between the pipes there for Penn State. You're going to have to beat him with good stuff. Chris Jordan goes far side. For Trainer. Trainer sends behind the goal from Malone. He and Bonnet's there to joust behind the goal. Jordan, the St. Lawrence transfer, working against Queen for Navy. Shot clock at 25. Trainer back up top. Near side now for Haas. Shot clock at seven. Trainer now, right alleyway. Nice pass on the angle, but the pass doesn't connect. He had a man made a nice cut on the angle. Would have been an open shot. Ground ball picked up by the mids. Here they come in transition after Jacob Darrow picked up the ground ball. Flaherty spinning. Left-hand shot high to high. Frassiel makes the save. That's an easy one for Frassiel up, up high. It's Flaherty kind of pushed the issue a little bit. A big keeper, 6'1", 188. I mentioned second team all american He's been streaking his career. It's interesting. You look at his numbers last year. You know, 10.89 goals against average. Obviously, the pace factors into that as far as when you look at the, the true numbers. I was looking through his season numbers last season. Trainer will or check it. Costin retreats out, back to Malone. Trainer brought him a screen. He goes away from it. Long behind the goal. Circles back, fires. Daly gets a piece of that. Pops right up in the air in front of him, and Dan's got it out to the near side for Bonnets. Five minutes to go in the quarter. Penn State leads 3-0. Go back to Fracion. Looking at his numbers last year, 
couple game stretch where he gave up 25 goals and only had 24 saves, and then, you know, had four really strong games where he gave up just 34 goals and had 63 saves. And any time you can kind of double those numbers, you're having success. So a little up and down, even in the last year, and you look in the tournament, a little bit up and down for him. But it's to the point now, though, where you have to expect. I mean, it, it's in. I want to say. It's impossible because it's not impossible. But, boy, man, you got to be really good to play that position now in this sport. Well, I think it's changed a little bit, uh, you know, over the last 15 years. I mean, I, I think you look in the early 2000s, you expect your goalie, if you're going to win a national championship, to be under 10 goals a game. I mean, I think that was the expectation. I don't think that's the expectation anymore. You kind of want your guy to make the saves that he's supposed to do and every now and then come up with a big save. Hewitt's pass gets knocked down. Ball free. Heads back toward the top of the restraining line here. Foot race is on. Haley tries to angle his way in. Jarris comes over to help out. And the Nittany Lions grab it up here with Scarfy. Another turnover by Navy. 3.43 to go in the quarter, and it's 3-0. I mean, the game's just played at a different pace now. I mean, back then, the game was played at a little bit lesser pace at times. So your goalie didn't see the volume of shots. Now he sees the volume of them, but Joe, the quality of that volume has increased tenfold because of the power and creativity of the players. Sure. The shot goes wide there from the far po or far point by Luke Mercer. I mean, you worked with one of the great ones in the booth for a long time, and Larry Quinn. Obviously, you know we hear Quint all the time on TV. Play the position at a high level. Navy's Mickey Jarbo was fantastic. Matt Russell played terrific here at Navy. Malone, oh, nice pass. Somehow got it through. Backhand shot goes wide by Aldridge. I don't know how they connected on the pass to begin with. Loose ball push. It's going to be called there against Pedden as he was pressuring Marsh on the end line. Well, that's a high-risk pass, but certainly could have brought high reward if he could have put it on goal there. Yeah, just a tough spot to put that on, put a nice ride there and a turnover. Trainer picks the pocket, picks up the loose ball, finds Malone, 1v1, shot score. Terrific ride by Penn State. And it results in a transition goal to make it 4 nothing. Nittany Lions. Watch Trainer here after the pickup on the replay. Yeah, seventh turnover by the Miz, and it's killing them right now. I mean, it's the little stuff. Six on six defense, they've been really good. But in transition, you're not going to stop that. No doubt about it. Timeout on the field. We have 2.36 to go. First quarter, Penn State 4, Navy nothing. Back in a moment on the Navy Sports Network. Yeah, the stats are not up Yeah, there. I was going to say. <laughs> I, I, I'm just Something looking, happened I'm, to our stats. I'm looking over your shoulder to yes. see if the live stats had stopped. Off the wing. Mids with the face off with Gallagher. Sean with the long pole comes in from 12 yards. Shoots. Freesayon makes the save again. Uh, that's his best save of the afternoon right there with the long pole bearing down. Excellent save. I mean, that's a great chance by Gallagher. He hustled in. He won the ground ball. Yeah, you did everything right there. Yep. There's nothing you can do about that. Fracion makes a really nice save. The Annapolis native. Penn State, 12th ranked in the country. And so far, they've looked the part here with a minute 57 to go in the quarter. Pedden got a couple of goals already today. Costin back behind the goal. Jake Morn. Long behind the goal. Played with a short stick of Peters. Ball deflected. McCalsey got a piece of that one. Battle for the ground ball, and it's going to go out of bounds off of. Well, they're going to give it to Navy. I thought Lacalzi may have hit that last. And now we've got a. Navy staff not happy with the halting of the restart there. Mids will go back to this second midfield unit. Got a couple of good looks when they were out there the last time. Conway. Behind the goal. Played with a short stick of Haas. 
Ball's sticking a little bit too long for the mids right now, too. Here's Hauser trying to drive down a left alleyway. You can hear the Navy staff telling him to move it. Hauser taking a very low percentage shot there. It goes wide. Haley will back it up with 43 seconds left on the shot clock. 53 left in the quarter. I think there's always a half uh, apprehension, even though it doesn't really matter who you're playing. If you've been shut out for an entire quarter, you're looking for that first goal, trying to get that perfect goal. Haley tries to go near side, switched hands to his right. Frassion able to knock that away, and then Haley sweeps it out of bounds before Flaherty could get over there, and it'll be Penn State ball. With time here, 39 seconds to go in the quarter, and the Nittany Lions already leading by a count of 4 nothing. Yeah, tight room to try to get that shot to go. Frassion really hugging that near post, and he makes the save there. It's a solid fundamental play from Frassion here, the junior out of Annapolis via the Bullis School. We've had a chance through the years to do some Big Ten Network games and getting to know Jeff Tambroni a little bit in this program in uh, some of those games. Jeff, a defenseman at Hobart in the first lacrosse game I ever broadcasted back in 1991 at Salisbury as Chris Jordan's shot goes wide. Joe, they probably wouldn't play the game today. It was natural grass. It was a cow pasture at Seagull Stadium <laughs> and a monsoon rainstorm. And Hobart won the game 13 to 12, one of the greatest games I've ever seen, and how they played that well in those weather conditions, I'll never know. End of the quarter comes here, and the mids could use the break. 15 minutes going by, Penn State impressively, as they've done all year. Good in the first quarter, they've been good here today. They lead it by a count of four to nothing. Joe and I are back in a moment on the Navy Sports Network. Uh, numbers that just heavily have weighed things in Penn State's favor because they've made the mids pay well, for those mistakes. Yeah, two big mistakes led to two layups. I mean... So really, you're looking at this game, and it's four nothing. But two of them were simple, easy goals. Uh, you really could argue the third one was the easy, simple goal as well, too. So they've been their own worst enemy here for Penn State, though. Frasion's played well; he's made four saves. Mids have gotten a couple decent looks. Haley missed one wide on the doorstep, and then of course uh, the long pole Gallagher with a shot that Frasion made a, a really good save on. So not all terrible. But still, you're down four goals. You haven't scored. And Penn State has the ball after that opening face of the second quarter. Yeah, and you're playing against a keeper who's just not going to give many low percentage, you know, shots to you. Look at the ball gets knocked away. Daly out of the goal, unsettled. Nittany Lions grab the 50-50 ball, and then they lose it. Good play by Bonnets there to pick it up and get it to Daly. I have no idea what happened there. You had <laughs> guys falling over teammates. You had the ball knocked free. A little bit of everything there. Peters rolls. Thought about going to the goal. Yeah, I mean, Moore eventually the last guy to lose it for Penn State. Lost uh, the stick. Tried to pick it up and get back into action. A little bit of everything on that one. Our line looking for some help as he'll reset things here for Navy. Hewitt with a man coming on. Ducks out of the way of the oncoming Kyle Aldridge. Can't get four if you're the mids. You can't. There's no four-point shot. You just got to chip away here. Hewitt. Good close out by Alex Ross immediately there. Well, right now you just need one. I mean, you need to settle down, get a goal here. Schiff and Haas. Hewitt. 20 on the shot clock here for Navy. Hewitt fires. That shot goes wide. Mids back it up. Hewitt, a guy that can get going at any time for this team. Four goals, one assist on the year so far. Our line sprinting from below the goal line, picked up in front by Havivian. He tries to backhand it. Frasion made the save. My goodness. I don't know if Frasion saw it, Joe, but I know his body got it. Well, the pipe stopped the first one, and that second one, I think he was just rolling back, and he got a piece of it with his body. Here's Hewitt coming inside. He shoots and scores on the low-to-low -low shot. Now, a really good offensive set there by the mids. I mentioned before, they hit the pipe on the initial opportunity. And this is a great move by Max Hewitt. You talked about his individual ability just moments ago, and he just ducks under the check here and gets free inside to get the goal. Uh, Hewitt just winning his individual matchup, turns his defender inside out, and that's a good finish down low. And the mids needed that goal. But a really good offensive set, got three good looks, hit the pipe, got the goal. And just what we talked about, just needs to get off the schneid here and get something positive going. But a great job by Hewitt to turn his defender inside out and get the goal. 
Fifth of the year for the senior out of Denver. We talked about before. I don't think the indi individual matchups are too. It's not a situation where today it's just too big for them. I don't think that's the case. We'll find out as the game goes along. But I think athletically, this team can match up with Penn State, and it's not going to be an issue. Now, you got to keep these mistakes at a, at a minimum, and that certainly hasn't happened here early on. But you get a goal, you win the faceoff, and now you're back on offense. Good ground ball by Justin Queen, the freshman out of the Severn School for the Mids, to give Navy another possession, and that's what they need down 4-1 here with 12 and a half to go second quarter. Pedden with two goals to lead the way for Penn State so far. That four-goal burst in the first. Conway, tough angle shot. I mean, you're just not going to beat Tracy on with that. You can hear the Navy staff a little dis disappointed in that decision-making. You can get that shot anytime. Pass backside. Oh, Schiffenhaus stopped by Fracion. Did he step in the crease or is it a push? What do we got? They're going to say it's a push and into the crease, and it's Navy's possession. Now, great pass, great look inside, and again, you know, maybe get another chance to see on the replay. Fracion looked like he was out of position, but somehow was reaching back to make that save. Flaherty sees a double coming, gets it away to Conway. Conway gets the screen by Schiffenhaus, and that's a moving screen. Right call, and here comes Penn State quickly in transition. McVicker gets it away. Trainer. And again, a terrible giveaway by the mids. Good roll by Mercer there to avoid the check. He'll settle things down for Penn State. Mercer with a wing dodge against the shorty. Stops. Back across the box. Good job by Peters. Mercer able to get it away, though. Mercer rolls against Peters here. 20 on the shot clock for Penn State. Ooh, good catch of that pass by Jordan. Jordan left alleyway, picked up by Marsh on the switch. Back to Trainer against the shorty. Norton tried to keep him in front. Trainer whistles when it goes wide. Six on the shot clock. Yeah, really good defense there by Norton who had to pick up their leading goal scorer. Here's Malone on the restart. Try to pull his way in. Tough angle shot. Karam's off the pipe all the way back to the post. Horn sounded there, but referees say play on. Schiffenhaus doubled, somehow has it, lost it, and Penn State wins the ride. Sam Sweeney, the local product out of Edgewater via Gonzaga in the nation's capital. Now Malone with a tremendous job to put that on target. Daly had to make the save there, so hence the sh no shot clock violation. Joe, you mentioned it earlier, though, riding packages by Penn State have really flustered Navy in the clearing game here. And they've been able to create multiple turnovers off that ride well, so far. It's any sign of trouble, they pounce on it. And, it's, you know, we talked about those pressure points that different teams have it at different times on how they want to attack things. But Penn State has been super aggressive. And it's no surprise. I mean, that's what they want to do in the, the middle third of the field. But any sense of trouble, they've gone multiple guys at the problem. Malone's pass tipped up in the air by Bonnets, and Bonnets will collect the ground ball. Another good play by the All-American defender for Navy. And a great job by Jackson Peters, too, to sort of just turn the stick upside down for the Penn State player he was guarding so he couldn't get there. Swanson on the near side. <laughs> Schiffenhaus backs up. Well, the good news here for Navy is you – basically you've had to play defense for about two minutes straight and you did not give up a goal a goal yeah. and really the only shot you gave up was a whirling dervish from a tough angle that your goalie had to make a save on Gerald's Kelly behind the goal here for the men's working against Kyle Aldridge in the short stick matchup Hewitt who has Navy's goal 
Brings it over here to the near side. Forces the pass into Tolker. Tolker drops it, gets it back, back to Hewitt here. Shot clock at 25. Yeah, Tolker was open, but Hewitt just waited a little bit too long, allowed Penn State to react to it. Swanson trying to get it to Jarris. Aldridge broke it up. Our line comes to get it with 15 on the shot clock. 4-1 Penn State, and the pass intercepted from behind the goal there. Nicely done by Alex Ross out of Davidsonville and Archbishop Spalding. Yeah, great job by Ross there. Navy had a man open. It was a poor pass again. I mean, the passing hasn't been great here early on. We saw that one pass inside that forced Tracy on to make the save. But other than that, they've missed on some opportunities, and that certainly was another one. Good job by Fraseon in the cl clearing game to help out. Gets it to Long with one second to get it over. And Penn State back to work here with 7.45 to go in the second quarter. And Penn State leading 4-1. Morin on the far. Working against the short stick of Queen. Pedden from behind the goal. Looking for his third. Mercer, left-handed shot. Yeah, put that one off the post there. Nice little stutter step move. Fake right came back to his left. Got a good shooting lane. Marshall will attempt again down the left alleyway here. Short stick waiting on him. Of Hurdle. Malone behind the goal. Spotted his man, so he stands behind his goalie in the crease. Penn State running a series of cutters through the front. Shot clock at 33. Oh, trainer broke open. They go behind him to Pedden. A rare miss by Malone on a pass because trainer broke open and had space. Trainer to the far. Shot clock at 15 now for Penn State, leading 4 1, second quarter. Against Hurdle to Shorty. To the point. High bouncing shot. By Costin goes wide with seven on the shot clock. Malone will have time. He'll make a go of it. Working against Bonnets. Shot clock at four at three. Malone will try. Daly knocks it aside. Rebound. Trainer in front. Ball's loose. And Daly will rake it like he's raking leaves in the springtime back into his crease. And Bonnets sends it far side for Marsh. And a big save by Daly there. Penn State has been very good in unsettled situations there. Now, you know, it doesn't go down as a shot clock violation, but they forced two just low percentage shots with the shot clock running down for Malone. And, you know, coming into this game and all the possessions Penn State had had this year, they only had one shot clock violation. Flaherty with a kick save. Tracy on. Rebound collected by our line far side as the ball went high into the air. A lot of faith in this second midfield unit for this Navy team. They'll get another ship. Shift here. Five and Flaherty. a half. Yep, five and a half to go. Flaherty goes far side. Tolker. Our line so far with just one shot in the game for the mids. Here's Hauser. Schiffenhaus. Fracion knocks it down. Might have been heading wide from the left-handed shot to the far post. But Fracion taking no chances, knocking it down. Penn State in the clear, and they can't do it. Now, yeah, rare mistake for Penn State today in the clearing game for them. Hoss tried to get it up the right side and get it across, but he forgot to take the ball with him, and the mids will get another chance here with five minutes to go. Shots are 17 apiece. Penn State, 10 of their 17 on goal. Navy with nine of their 17. Tracy on with eight saves. Dan Daly, six so far in the contest. And those two just absolute gifts that Navy gave Penn State in that first quarter, Joe, just... Sticking out like a sore thumb right now. Schiffenhaus bobbles, gets it back. Navy reorganizes to Hauser up top. Far side, Flaherty. Shot clock at 45. They move for our line behind the goal. X surveying, waiting. Flaherty scores. Jack Flaherty through the traffic. Joe used the screen perfectly because you could tell Fracion didn't really react until the last minute. And that shot goes down low and beats Fracion. Navy now down 4-2. Well, it's a little thing, but nice work inside by Henry Talker. He, he really takes the attention of everybody inside here. You can see 10 there at your screen. He's got a couple guys watching on him. 
and they get it outside. And because of that, they're a little late getting out to Flaherty. That's a really good shot from Flaherty on the wing. And the mids have cut this lead down to two. Time out on the field, 419 to go second quarter, 4-2 Penn State. Back in a moment on the Navy Sports Network. To Penn State, mids have scored the last two. Joe slowly working their way back into this one as uh, they get the long range shot from Flaherty. You mentioned A, the individual defender closing out late because everybody's looking at Tolker cutting through the crease. But then there were two guys. Conway was engaged with a defender and Flaherty, I thought, used the screen perfectly there to get that long range shot away. Well, he talked about the confidence they've had in the second midfield unit and arguably you know, they've done as good a job today creating an offensive opportunity as the first unit. Another face-off win for Hayashi. And I, I think the bigger news is six on six, Navy defensively has just been really good so far today. I mean, as we talked about, since the opening kind of first five, six minutes where they, I think maybe, uh, I don't know, had to adjust to the pace of the play or, you know, Penn State just jumped on them a little bit earlier and there was a little bit slow to react to it. Since then, it's been a pretty even ball game. You look at the numbers, it's pretty much even throughout uh, most of the numbers so far. Let's go third midfield here with Garza and Landolfi on the field. Landolfi had his pass blocked. Freshman trying to win it back for Navy. Loose ball, Pavivian. Garza settles it down. Here's Haley coming inside. Fracion, piece of that one. Yeah, good job by Haley to stay out of the crease as he went towards the target there. He was just able to keep that, well, that cross out of there. They're going to say Fracion did not get that. That ball changed directions. But, you know, interesting. Obviously, we all saw the Syracuse goal that was disallowed. There was, I mean, Mikey Weishar scored a goal yesterday. It seemed to be the exact same way the Syracuse goal was scored against Maryland. And that goal was allowed, so you're trying to contort your body as so Vivian forces one with a shot clock winding down. <laughs> Penn State will get it on the shot clock violation. And if you're an offensive player now, you're just, you know, you just don't know. You, know, you got to do whatever you can to contort your body to stay out of that white circle at this point. I mean, at this point, we should just get rid of the bigger white circle, leave the other area there that protects the goalie. Because you're taking athleticism away. I mean, Xavier Arline plays. He's a guy that's affected by that. Because that's a that's a move he likes to make constantly, diving toward that crease. And you know, there's a lot of subjectivity in that rule right now, at least the way it's being applied with certain officials right now. Costin slips down against Bonnets, gets back up. Shot clock at 35 here for Penn State. 4-2 Nittany Lions, 2.05 to go. Trainer. Pedden goes down trying to set a screen for him. Long Pins up top. To move yeah. the screen there. Long. Pass. Oh, beautifully done. Pedden with a quick stick. Into the goal. Penn State had not scored in the quarter. They get a giant goal there at 152. Petten's third of the day. It's Penn State five and Navy two. Well, Petten has been the star here early on, but this is a great feed off the wing here. You have Penn State. Petten is fourth of the season, but this great job here. Ethan Long, I mean, this is throwing it to a spot, and Petten, I mean, that's just really good. I mean, Norton has a pretty good spot there. You're probably not expecting Petten to take that shot in that spot. Uh, it's an ambitious pass. By long, but it works out for Penn State. Now up by three. Great goal there by the Nittany Lions. Hayashi now won seven of the nine faceoffs, and maybe getting possession. Zach running it below the restraining line. Maybe we'll call the timeout. Hayashi for this Navy faceoff unit has given up at this point. See if they can get one here to close to within two as the Nittany Lions got the big goal at 152 to go back up 3-5-2. Shots are 20 to 18, Navy. Conway far side, Hauser now Flaherty. Our line behind the goal. Oh, you had Tolker. Right there, Fraseon cuts it off. Conway with a chance to get the rebound in front of the crease, couldn't get it. Ground ball picked up Penn State. Long pass though ahead to Aldridge. Thrown away. Bonnets comes to get it for Navy as Hoss threw it away. 
Conaway coming back for Navy the other way. Thought our line had Haley available too. And Mack with that left-handed shot was in good position. He got it a little bit behind Toker than he initially had him, and it forced Henry to kind of shut off his angle a little bit more. But and there's another Fracion turn away. Ball to the near side. Our line able to pick it up. Tolker drops it though, ball down. Tolker through the traffic, he can't get it. Are they gonna give Navy Tom, a timeout? Yeah, yep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a simple catch for Tolker and he lost it there. I, mean, got I think Conway just touched the ball, Joe, and they gave him a timeout. Yeah, long range shot for Azion, got had a little trouble with that one, but he did steer it aside, got just enough a little bit of a late reaction on that far wing shot. Um, I think it was from Flaherty. Uh, he was able to push it aside and then the loose rebound in front. But Mids have, you know, created some chances here. Frazion's played well. It's funny, you know, watching him a little bit leading into this game, he seemed like a guy that moves around. But watching him in person, he's very stationary. Let's see. See the, the Tolker, the ball got kicked. Ever had possession here to get the timeout. Yes. Tolker they did had just have enough. <laughs> yep. Just enough in his cross to, you know, get the verbal. You hear the verbal request as it balls in his stick. So Navy out of timeouts now with 29.6 to go. Each and every week we see great interviews with our Navy student athletes. First midfield unit back on for the mids here. Final 20 seconds. Tolker up top for Hewitt. Far side Swanson now with 15. Our line's played by Ross. Gets it away to Swanson now with eight. Dane gonna go from X with six, with five. Match up with a shorty with four. Swanson, tough angle shot. Missed to the near side with 1.1 to go. Haley will have it. He'll throw the pass in front. It doesn't get to anybody, and the horn sounds. End of the first half here in Annapolis. And the four goal outburst by Penn State in the first quarter holding up right now. So we head to the half, Penn State 5, Navy 2. Back in a moment on the Navy Sports Network. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. That's uh, I, I'd maybe go uh, the Oriole Bird. <laughs> that's a good one. Mids win another faceoff as Hayashi gets his fifth round ball. Peter scores! Can't get a better start to the third quarter than that. Ten seconds in. Hayashi continues to dominate at the faceoff dot. And Jackson Peters, one of the best strong stick defensive midfielders in the country, converts for the mids. Ten seconds in, it's Penn State five and Navy three. I like that new term for him, strong stick defensive midfielder, Jackson Peters. Because he's strong <laughs> offensive player. You know, it's interesting there. Penn State kind of had him a little bit in a bind, but the double team goes away, gives him that room to his right. Maybe a little bit of a mistake there by the Nittany Lions. We've talked about how quickly they've been to pounce, but Jackson Peters, he's shown that ability all season long to shoot his third of the season. Zach Hayashi, his first career assist. And you're right, Pete, 10 seconds in. Couldn't ask for a better start here for the mids in the second half. And Hayashi called for moving early there. And let's see what the adjustments are for Penn State offensively here in the second half, too. You know, they're not going to sit idly by. They're probably not happy with their settled offense 6v6 right now. So they're going to make some changes, I'm sure, of here in the second half and see how Navy has to adjust to that. More and ball dislodged by Norton. Ball comes free. Navy triple teams him. Ball comes free again, and Marsh has it for the midshipman. Long pass looking for Peters, and he's got it. Jackson sprinting below the restraining line. Will he get the shot away? He does. Hits the pipe. Caroms out here to the near side. Two Navy players going for it. Run out by Gallagher. It'll stay with Navy as Peters almost created another opportunity for the mids there. We're less than a minute gone by here in this third quarter. Now the mids just jump Morin as he had a little bit of hesitation. Marsh with the headlong pass, pretty good one. Peters showing his athletic ability. And again, I'll go back to the point we made early on here, Pete. Athletic difference to these two teams is, isn't much. I mean, this is these are two teams that can match up. Sometimes you welcome in a top you know, 10, 15 type team and you, you can't match up with them. Well, the mids can match up with them. There's no doubt about that. And, a transition opportunity, and Peters hits the pipe. Our line top of the box inside. 
Swanson's stick hit as he shot. It goes haplessly wide. Tolker, though, back there to get it for the mids. Uh, great pass by Xavier in the early change here to start the second half for the mids is putting Xavier up top, trying to create from on top instead of from behind. Hewitt, Swanson, Fracion gets a piece of that. Might have gone above the crossbar, but Fracion again as he's been solid today. Denies Navy at the 13-24 mark, Penn State clearing left to right. I don't know if shooting high on Fracion, just seeing him here in person for the first time is the is necessarily the best way to go on some of those shots. He really over overplays those high shots. Jordan on the near side, carries below the goal line, gives it up for long, or for a trainer rather. Trainer dislodged by Marsh, ball free. That's a great play by Marsh to knock it free. Trainer though coming out here on the near side. Mids give him space, and Daly turns it aside. Rebound collected by Jordan, though, to the far side. Ball deflected. Mercer has it. 15-yarder steps into it. It goes wide. Yeah, nice save by Daly. Just couldn't find the ground ball. Jordan carries it back up top again. Long-range shot. Wow, Mercer had something on that. Daly able to knock it down for the mids. Fakes the pass with Malone on the ride. And now Daly will lob ooh, right across his goal mouth, but nobody there, fortunately, for Penn State. Yeah, trying to shoot that ball through Daly almost on that one. As you Hauser mentioned. got to get it across. He's in trouble. And that's going to be a failed clear on Navy. He couldn't pick it up at first. You don't want to throw it back into your no. own end in that spot. That's for sure. So the mids, after making, getting a great save from Daly, Give the ball back here. Penn State back to work. You can't give the Nittany Lions continued chances. Got to be a little bit more movement towards the ball for Navy. They're kind of relying on individuals to clear it right now. Long throws to Malone. Malone back up top. Morin. Underhand flip to Malone with 45 on the shot clock now for Penn State with trainer up top five yards outside the box against Marsh. Wallstrom with his first touch of the day for Penn State. Matched up with Justin Queen. Behind the goal quickly now. Malone surveys. Cut. Trainer tries to go behind the back. Shoots it wide. The Queen's Lobo played really well here for the mids today. Good looking freshman short stick defensive midi. Villanova women's team watching from the far side. Perch. They will play Navy coming up today at 3 o'clock. Pedden, Wallstrom, shot clock at 10 now for Penn State. Long underhands, boy, he had Pedden in a good spot, but he, Morin steps into the low shot, Daly turns it aside, Bonnets has it, oh, he rolls it back to Daly, Daly dives backwards to make it, but the ride, ball knocked down by Pedden, trainers got it on the turnover. A yeah, disaster there for the mids. Not goalkeeper interference. He was clearly out. It just It's a poor outlet, and the mids just can't get the ball out of their own end right now. They are surviving right now, but it's hard to play three straight offensive possessions like this against a team like Penn State. Yeah, he's giving them extra chances. 5-3 Nittany Lions. Jordan from 15 yards. Daly in the way of that one is it. Karam's high in the air, 60 seconds for the Nittany Lions. So the early adjustment, it seems, for Penn State is taking more shots from the outside. I mean, that's what they've come out here in the first five minutes. I mean, they've been bombs away from the outside here early on. Costin to 10 yards. Costin switches hands. Daly turns that aside to the right. Bonnet's going to try and get there, but Jordan clearly ahead. Daly with a couple really nice saves here early on. Fresh 60 for Penn State. Almost three minutes of defensive time here for Navy. Malone, beautiful swim move to get free. Backhand shot goes wide. Trainer will run it out. Stays with Penn State with 45 on the shot clock. Long, top of the box to Jordan from the wing. Inside, they try to get it to Malone. 
Queen has him there. Let's see what Malone does here. Gives it up pretty quickly against the short stick. Shot clock at 25. Malone will get it back right point. Makes a nice catch of that pass that was headed behind him. Played by Queen. Malone gets free. Here he comes. Left hand. Off the side of the net. Picks up his rebound with 14. Inside for Trainer, who comes free and scores. Joe, you just can't keep giving them the ball. They're too talented. And Malone finding Trainer, who makes it 6-3 Penn State at 9 away to the third. Especially you get into these unsettled situations like balls on the side of the net. Everybody's taking a look at the ball for a second. You get a little bit unsettled there. And Trainer makes the cut and just, you know, just gets inside of Queen. I don't even know if that's actually Queen's guy. He kind of picks him up there because everything gets a little bit frantic when the ball gets on the side of the net there and it got a little spread out and Trainer does a good job to finish there but you, you, you had two chances to, to clear the ball there and you did um, you know unsuccessful on both of them one on a violation on time and then you throw it right off the stick of uh, of Malone the last time and you just can't give a team like Penn State that many chances Trainer is 13th of the season I mean that's as good a defense as you can play there all the way around and now the unfortunate part of that, you lose the face off and Penn State's back on offense here. Penn State, Chase Mullins winning that one himself. North Carolina transfer. Here's Pedden. Pedden's brother Jake played in North Carolina. Mom and dad, athletes down at Elon. I think his dad played basketball, mom played soccer. Pedden looking for his fourth of the day. So you just defended for three minutes. Now you're defending again. If you can get a couple fresh legs out there. Peters now out there for Queen. Trainer, roll dodging down the right alleyway. Cuts inside of Bonnets. Bonnets forces him wide late. Trainer carries still behind the goal. Switched on to by Lacalzi. Bounces it for more. Nice cut inside. Malone couldn't get the shot away. Here's a long range shot. That one whistled over top by Mercer. Shot clock at 17 here for Penn State. Malone coming inside, goes down low, backhander, well wide. Stays with Penn State with 10. Gallagher that time playing Malone. Long pole for the mids. Here's Pedden trying to get away from Bonnets. Bounces off of him, goes down low, shot goes wide. Gallagher escorts the ball into the stick of Daly in the crease, and the mids will look to clear. I will say on that possession, Penn State looked a little tired on offense. Yeah. We talk all about the defense playing that amount of time, but Penn State looked a little gassed to me there at the end of that possession. Uh, look, they had the ball for almost six straight minutes there, so it's understandable. 6-3, Nittany Lions here with 7.18 to go, third quarter. Of course, the last time these two teams played, the final score was 5-4. I thought there was no chance we'd get that kind of game today. Still plenty of time here, but 6-3, Nittany Lions here as Haley cuts across the top of the box for Navy. Finds Conway. Uh, you want to talk about how big the next goal is. I mean, it's a big difference, 6-4 to 7-3. And, and I know it's just the third quarter, but you're past the halfway part of the third quarter. Conway has his stick hit as he goes to shoot. Hauser scoops up the ground ball for the mid, slips down, gets back up. Under pressure from O'Connor. Down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Flaherty. Doubled. Haley with five. Shoots. Save Fracion for the post, one or the other there. Yeah, I think it was Fracion. Haley had to go to the right hand yeah. there. I think his foot got it. Karam played by Penn State. Hoss up the left side for the clear. So the mids get a decent shot on Freese on there, but he makes the save again. 12 today for the Penn State keeper. Six minutes. Dougie fresh to go here third quarter. Penn State leading at 6-3. Jordan comes on from midfield through the box. Trying to run by Kittleberger down the left side. Kittleberger with an over-the-shoulder trail check. But Trainer gets the 50-50 ball. Yeah, it just uses his body really well. They tried to go five-hole and slide it through there on the nutmeg, and Trainer closed up shop and got the ball back. 
It's dominated the ground ball category, 24-14, first half. Wallstrom throws behind the goal for Malone. Five and a half to go, 16 on the shot clock for Penn State. Great opportunity, and they score. It's Wallstrom wide open. Lacalzi <laughs> and Marsh communicating with each other after the goal. But, Joe, you called it. Next goal, Penn State gets it, and they lead 7-3. Yeah, I think they might have even collided with each other here as Marsh has it behind the cage. You can't see, but both got caught up with each other. And just a wide open look and easy opportunity for Wallstrom there. The sophomore buries that one. And Penn State gets that four goal lead right back. Malone's second assist of the day, 7-3 Nittany Lions with 5.21 to go. We're back in a moment on the Navy Sports Network. Seven three Penn State. We have five twenty one to go here in this third quarter. Mullins and Hayashi. Ball swept out. In the middle of the N Star logo and a whistle sounds and a penalty. Our first of the day coming up here on somebody. Don't too see too many penalties off a of face off. Not sure what Mullins did here to draw the ire of the officials, but we're about to find out. That's a big one. So grab the ball with his hand. Yeah, with his free hand there. So this is unreleasable. One minute here. So this is an opportunity here for the mids. Trail official who called it, explaining it to Jeff Tambroni, the Penn State coach. Big opportunity for the mids here. Penn State's man down unit. Been really good. Yep, two of 11. Maybe with just two man up goals so far on the year. Now you were looking for an opportunity. Here it is to yep. see if the mids can take advantage of it. You've got to hopefully at least get one out of it. Ash on for the mids on the EMO. Swanson and R-line inside. Hewitt and Tolker. Now R-line. Swanson. They love Swanson as a sniper in this. Tolker, Hewitt. Ross closing out on Swanson. Penalty at 29. Mids have yet to get a shot here on the EMO. Hewitt. Far side, Tolker. Oh, good catch by Haley on the low pass. Hewitt up top. This is good man down defense, keeping Navy on the perimeter. Oh, good catch. Shot. Oh, just across the goal mouth. Frecyon got enough of it, and he redirected it away from the goal line, and Penn State survives another Navy shot here. Yeah, and Frecyon, I, I, Pete, I think it also might have hit the pipe there, too. On that opportunity, he he got a big part of it. There's no doubt about it. But it, the pipe is probably what made it change direction to go away from the goal line. So a great opportunity for Navy there. Goes away. 7-3 Penn State with 3.51 to go here in the third. Long at 15 yards, backs up. Finds more in here near side against the shorty. Trying to get inside of Peters. Peters pushes him below the goal line. He'll try again, comes back up, and scores. Great job by Jake Morin. Second defender comes over, no problem. The diminutive Morin listed at 5'8", ducked underneath of him. And the Garnet Valley, Pennsylvania native puts Penn State up 8-3 with 3.34 to go. Well, one of the few times that individual has just won his matchup here for Penn State. And he carries that momentum as he turns the corner and keeps it going there as he gets under Neath the defender that time, and just a big swing there from the mids up a man with 60 seconds in an EMO to Penn State scoring to make it 8-3. Big swing there after Haley saved by Frecyon, and then Morin at the other end, his fourth of the season. Penn State now by five. Ball free, Navy wins again. Gallagher off the wing. Mids have now won 10 of 14 faceoffs. Massive traffic jam going through the box there, as you can hear. The time now running short on Navy. Down to 3.16 to go here in this third quarter. And Penn State building a five-goal bulge. Hey, 
Car line around the Jarris pick. Hewitt down the right alleyway. Jarris played by the short stick of Aldridge behind the goal. Long pole comes on a good switch. Good job by Scarfy. Swanson trying to bull his way down the left alleyway. And he overshoots our line. Joe, we'll say this though, in the 6v6, the timing of the slides when a short stick is matched up by the long pole coming to help have been better than average at being on time for Penn State today. So Navy has not been able to isolate those matchups and try to take them 1v1. Yeah, they haven't made a lot of mistakes. As right I there. say that, they throw it away. If our line picks that up, they got an odd man rush there, but Mids will settle for the ball here and just slow things down. Yeah, just 6v6, they, they haven't made a lot of miscues. They haven't let guys wide open. Sort of been their MO. You got to earn it against Penn State. And then Jarris overthrows Swanson. Turnover number 14 by the Mids. Only six of them caused by Penn State. You know, Penn State trending turnover wise below their average this season. They were at 20 a game. They've, uh, they've turned it over here nine times right now in the third quarter. Only one time overall in this quarter though. That's and it's been Navy again. Navy staff will go back and look at this with their team and Navy is gifted for the eight goals to the Nittany Lions. Just gifted them to them. Well, it's sort of that you know, point we came in talking about. Is that passes off the mark? And Penn Costin State can't save it. Turns it over there. But the point we talked about, if you're going to go against the number 12 team in the country, you're going to beat them. You don't have to play perfect. Nobody's – like, I don't think it's the point where you're a massive underdog that you have to play perfect. But you cannot make those mistakes constantly as they do it again. I mean, this is – as bad as it gets the last three turnovers. Simple passing and catching errors by the mids. Sam Sweeney brings here near side for TJ Malone. 8-3 Penn State, down to a minute to go here in the third quarter. I mean, I think there's been points over the last, you know, 10, 12 years, wherever you want to, where, you know, maybe a team that came in that was, you know, 12th or 10th in the country came in and you knew as Navy they had to be close to perfect. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. You don't have to be close to perfect, but you can't be this today. I mean, it's just careless turnovers, kind of sleepwalking through the first couple minutes that allowed Penn State. It took you a while to catch up to things. You played so well the first two weeks, and I, and I and granted, I mean, I I, I get it. The each week the competition is ratcheted up as Morin stripped from behind on the trail, checked by Bonnets. And I understand the 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 competition is ratcheted up each week. But the last two weeks have to be a huge concern for this Navy staff with the way that they've played. Well, especially when you put it in the context of their schedule. Here's Marsh off the pipe. Uh, he hit that pipe square that time. <laughs> <laughs> and as the horn sounds, Norton throws from long range. Marsh almost gave the mids a lift right there. But the pipe, if it hasn't been Fracy on, it's been the pipe today. That has helped Penn State build a five-goal lead as we go to the fourth quarter. 8-3, Penn State. Back with the fourth quarter in a moment on ESPN+. Plus. Navy, of course, with their Patriot League schedule right around the corner next week at BU and the following week at Lehigh, followed by a Friday game at Johns Hopkins. So the next three on the road for the mids. Dangerous games indeed. Hayashi wins another faceoff. Navy 11 of 15 in that category today. When you think about the mids scoring 10 seconds into the second half and They've been held scoreless since then, and it, that's the, you know, what has hurt them over the last couple of years has been those scoring droughts. Some good games today. Hopkins in North Carolina, Loyola and Rutgers, Maryland and Princeton all today. Seen some fantastic lacrosse early in the season. A couple of weeks, I'll have Virginia and Maryland over in College Park. Can't wait for that one. Our line behind the goal. Ross will come behind to play him. Question now, is it spacing for the mids? 
because if you don't space properly, you can allow the those slides we were talking about, which have been good for Penn State today, to be even more effective. Flaherty tries to dodge from the wing and force it. Turned away. Haas throws to Ross. And here comes Penn State again. Minute and a half gone by, fourth quarter. Penn State leading by a count of 8-3. They've outshot Navy 34-31 so far here in this one. I think, I think our crowd, Mike, each week captures the official word of the sport of lacrosse. Here's Ross coming on. He'll crank one up, shoots and scores. Or make it Ethan Long, rather. Nobody saw Ethan Long coming out of the box. And the Calvert Hall Cardinal, Joe, blasts that one and makes it 9-3. Well, it's, it's we've seen it a couple of times now here in the second half where just a, a little couple of mistakes by the mids and that's led directly to Penn State goals. Not as directly as we saw in the first half, but you know, Long coming in, you know, I don't know if it's, it's always tough to figure out whose guy it was. Peters is the guy trailing him. I don't know if that was the issue on that one, but either way, nobody picks him up and it's a great look. And you expect him to be able to bury that one. When you think about of the nine goals that Penn State has scored today, you would probably say five, maybe six, we're in the high percentage of where you would say a good college lacrosse player is going to bury 80% yeah. of the time. Sure. And then you think about the three goals that Navy scored and how hard those goals have been for the mids. And that's just the difference in this ballgame right now. now. I think you captured it perfectly right there. And here's a bad clearing pass by Penn State that ends up in the Navy bench. I think that captured it right there. It has been so hard. It's been so much harder for Navy. And, and again, some of the shots they've had, Fracion has made saves. They've hit the pipe a couple times, no doubt. But running 6v6 offense, it's been so hard for Navy. And Penn State at times had some of the easiest chances show up in their lap. And obviously you're going to bury him when you're two on none, one v none against the goalie. But Penn State's created those opportunities with great riding and forcing Navy to make a play. And the Mids just haven't done it. And the offense hasn't been terrible for the Mids today. You mentioned you know, they, they probably hit the pipe about four different times today. They've gotten some opportunities. But, you know, oftentimes it's, it's the little things that can, that can kill you. And it's just been from that perspective, and that's another turnover. I mean, you're trying to go far back to near with about three sticks in the way. And it's not just been the 16 turnovers now, Pete, but it's probably been, I don't know, 10, 11 of them unforced. Ooh, long range shot that time by Scarfy, who had the deflection. Shoots it against the 10-man ride to the open goal and just misses. Morin. Ethan Long on the run again. Top of the box. Gives it back to Morin. They keep it moving for Costin. Costin will pull out with bonnets on him. Pedden with three on the day, backpedaling here. He's got three goals on five shots. Play by the Calzy. Gets the pick, comes inside, shoots and scores. Will Pedden with goal number four. And Penn State getting ready to warm up the bus. Nittany Lions lead at 10-3 with 11-10 to go here in the fourth. Well, coming into this game, Will Pedden had 12 career goals for Penn State. And he's had four here today. I mean, layman has been the guy at the start of the season. Pedden's coming in this game, and he's given them exactly what they needed. He's been quick with his shot. He's been able to get some good looks, and when he's gotten the opportunity, he has buried it today. That time, though, perfect use of the screen, spacing relationship with his screener. He knocks out both defenders and ends up with a 1v1 with the keepers. Mullins wins the faceoff, one of the few he's won cleanly here today. Pedden with his fourth of the day, fifth of the year. But again, we talk about it all the time. Basketball, you get illegal screens called because of the bad spacing between the person with the ball and the screener. That was picture-perfect work by Pedden and Long that time to create the opportunity for Penn State. That's something you got to work on. I mean, it's timing. It's 
Great work by those two players. Wallstrom gives it back to Pedden this time to set the screen for him with 10 and a half to go. McCalsey works underneath the screen to stay. There's also a part of that, Pete, too, that's mental and the confidence that you play with and the fluidity that you play with that you can tell that this team. I trust your teammates. Yep. Trainer up above goal line here. Thought about inverting, comes back, goes up high, and he scores. Top shelf, Trainer goes up high, beats Daly over the left shoulder. And the junior out of Downingtown, PA, and Malvern Prep puts Penn State up by a count of 11-3 with his third of the day. Well, this gets the award for best shot of the day. He turns inside, comes back, actually had the inside move, and then just sticks it top corner with the right-handed shot there. And for the mids, it got downhill pretty fast here today. Penn State has outscored Navy, as Joe pointed out, Navy scored 10 seconds into the second half. Since then, Penn State has scored six in a row to make it 11-3 with 10-13 to go in the fourth. Sweeney with the ball, pass knocked down by Hayashi. Zach's gonna get the ground ball, flips to Marsh. AJ below the restraining line, gets it to our line. X spins, that's great defense by Ross to cut him off. You get our line in space, man, he is tough to deal with, and Ross, just picture perfect, shoulder square to the defender, slams the door, and forces a reset by the Navy offense. Haley near side for Navy, keeps it moving up top for Jarris. Shot clock at 45, Jarris fires the shot. Frasian says, I'll take it. Quickly outlets to McVicker. Yeah, just trying to bull his way. Two guys on him, long range effort. Frasian really hasn't had to make a big save here in the second half. I mean, he's done a great job all game long, don't get me wrong. But the mids have made it a little bit easier for him here in the second, frame, second half. Ethan Long, near side. Pedden, play by Lacalze, runs over Long, set the screen. Long tells Pedden to reset. On the crease for Long, who shoots it over top. Jerry could tell, great, com great communication that time again by Long and Pedden. Pedden put it right on Long's stick. He shot it over top of the cage. May have had his stick hit as he released. Seen it a couple times. They're just throwing it to a spot, ne not necessarily to the player. That's where the player is going to be. Long falls down, loses the ball. Jacob Darrow with the ground ball for the mids. Daily outlet up the left side for Jackson Peters for Navy. 8 16 to go in the fourth. 11 3 Penn State. Peters pass from Norton dropped. Here comes Ross after knocking that ball down. Gets it ahead to Malone. Trainer. Oh, nice pass, shot, score! Ethan Long, the beneficiary. But Joe, that's Malone to an unselfish trainer who had a high percentage shot and then gave it to his teammate who had had an even better high percentage shot. This is pretty from Penn State. Yeah, it's just textbook stuff right here, sharing the ball from Penn State's perspective. I mean, that extra pass. Can't do it much better than that. Second of the quarter by Long, and he puts it home. You talk about executing. You go back to the last, uh, I don't know, eight, seven minutes of the third quarter into the first seven minutes of this fourth quarter. Uh, it's been pretty special by Penn State on offense here executing. Exceptionally talented team. If there's one hole, and that's a hole there. I mean, if there's one hole, I guess you could say it's face-offs where – They've done better here in the latter points of the third and fourth to cut into that deficit. Navy won 11 of the first 15. Penn State has won the last four. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, you look at that. They do turn the ball over a decent amount. Again, we talked about the style that they play. You're going to see that. It's not going to be a team that, but there are some moments where they will turn it over a little bit too much. Mercer, back to trainer. He's got five points on the day. Malone, up above goal line extended to Jordan. Go, 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 go. 
Now Malone up top. Oh, wow. That's a penalty. Lacalzi will go off if they don't score in this. Lacalzi knocks the pass down, and now the penalty coming up as that slash got right on the face mask. You could hear it all the way up here. So the slashing penalty, first penalty of the game against Navy. Each team now whistled for one infraction in the game. They got to put Aiden Hurdle and give him a long pull at 46 in yeah, he's defensively been playing on as a man short down. stick for the mids, yep. Penn State two of eight man ups so far this year. Yeah, surprising, not that great. They were great last year on the EMO, and I'm sure maybe just early season numbers for them. It's a talented offensive group. I'm sure that they'll be a little bit better as the season progresses on EMO. All six guys, goal line, ex goal line extended or higher. Malone faked one way, back to Mercer. Jordan, back to Malone. Oh, look at the pass to Long. Daly makes the save. And they get a crease violation. But again, what a super pass, Joe. Long just denied by a good save by the Navy keeper. Yeah, I think Daly in a mode where he just has to judge where that's going to go and guess, and he guessed right there. But, yeah, Malone with a rocket pass. I mean. Penalty with eight seconds remaining on it. Navy will be able to run off the rest of the time. And a man down kill by the mids. Hauser with Conway and Flaherty here. And Tolker, Haley, and our line on attack. Our line available behind the goal. Ooh, interesting there as Fracion came out right. Give him a different look. Ross goes behind to play him. I mean, as much, you know, we've talked about the different guys that have been huge today, Pedden, Long, all these guys. But to me, I mean, I think Alex Ross has played as well as anybody today for Penn State, too. Flaherty with a nice catch. Haley keeps it moving. Conway. You know, Ross has been terrific. I mean, he's had our line most of the day. Our line back oh, handed. Post again. Post again. Tolker trying to get it inside. They'll sweep it back toward the crease. Fracion's got it. Got a man middle of the field wide open. Has him with Aldridge. Aldridge to 10 yards. Shoots. Daly makes the save. Daly's got Kittleberger at midfield. He'll throw it to him, and Bobby will come back to make the catch. Feeds fellow long pole far side. Marsh carries over. Maybe quickly resets here. 4.50 to go on a 12 3 Penn State advantage. If you just joined us, Penn State gave up a goal 10 seconds into the third quarter and has not allowed one since here in the second half. They've scored seven straight. Haley to Conway in the give and go, shoots far side. That Great. might have hit the post again. Yep. Resets the shot clock to 60 for the mids. Shots 42-35 now in favor of Penn State. Our line will carry through X. Ross goes with him up above goal line. Hauser right alleyway. Great trail check knocked away from behind by Brendan Leary, freshman out of the Haverford School. Shot clock down to 30. Our line's going to see that blue jersey and that white six. Post-game dinner. And maybe even tonight in his dreams. Just been attached to him. Flaherty almost lost it on the check by O'Connor. Shot clock at eight. Haley, cross box. Hauser with five. Falling down. Throws it haplessly toward our line. Penn State's got it on the run out. Leary trying to pick it up. Finally does so here for Penn State. The mids had the one shot on the possession to hit the pipe and went to the far side. Otherwise, again, solid 6v6D by Penn State, led by Ross. 
Down to three minutes to go, 12-3 Penn State. Costin angling into 10 yards, shoots it wide. Pedden with four, trainer with three, long two for Penn State today. More near side, plays it back to the point for trainer. Roll dodges, slips down, cross box pass. Costin, swim past Kittleberger. Throws it for Long, who makes the nice catch. Shot clock at 25. Costin sips one with a wrist shot, shoots and scores from 10 yards away. 2.19 to go. Penn State scores its eighth in a row, and the Nittany Lions lead it 13 to 3. Yeah, a little stutter stu step move to get things started, and then a nice shot going far post, just sneaking that in, in there. And to say this second half has been all Penn State would be an understatement right now. 8-1, they've outscored the mids here in the second half. Seventh of the year for Costin, and the Nittany Lions going to be headed back up Route 322, a happy team today. 13-3 Penn State, back in a moment on the Navy Sports Network. 219 to go here. Penn State leading 13-3. Up in Worcester, the Navy women hanging in there basketball-wise against Holy Cross, who's been in first place most of the season. Mids leading 63-62 with a minute and a half remaining. Ben Johnson's the new keeper out of Avon Old Farms, the Illinois native in the cage now for Penn State. Tracyon's day done. 15 saves today for Jack. Junior out of Annapolis has come back home and played well in front of the home folks. Update on that score, 23 seconds left to go. Holy Cross 66, Navy 63. It's just a timeout. They do have the basketball down three with uh, 23.6 seconds left to go in Worcester. I like Worcester. Nice drive from the Providence Airport. Up route 146. Minute 20 to go. Jordan working against Queen. Question mark move. Daly makes the save. Rebound though caught by Garrett Glatz for Penn State. Played at Boys Latin. Brent Fleck. And looking for Mercer cross box and a bad pass. Goes out of bounds. Turnover, Penn State. It's 15th. 50.4 to go in Penn State leading 13-3. Nittany Lions will improve to 3-1. Third straight win after beating Villanova and Stony Brook. But the noticeable thing today, Joe, their first three games, they gave up 13, 10, and 10. Just three today. That's a big step of progress for Penn State, considering what lies ahead in that schedule coming up here. Yale and Cornell coming to State College. The mids throwing for Garza back up top, committed over and back. Penn State changing goal. Ben Johnson, a freshman out of Peoria, Illinois, has checked in. And Penn State will not have to shoot. We'll see if they do. Matt Lazaro. On for the Nittany Lions. Getting his name checked on the participation chart. And a very impressive, Joe, you mentioned it at halftime. We talked about what adjustments would come and the ones Penn State made. Certainly outlasting the mids here in the second half. Penn State outscores Navy 8-1 here in the second half. And they pull away for a 13-3 victory.